All right, everybody, welcome to session 2.5 of my FileMaker for Stage Lighting series. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, I highly recommend you turn off this video and you go back and watch the earlier videos. What we're going to be doing today is a direct um, continuation of our previous sessions, so you might be a little confused. Today is all about label sheets and how to create different labels for your fixtures, for your cables, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it actually will be a pretty simple day, pretty, pretty short presentation. Um, I did this as its own standalone thing because I know a lot of people have asked for it on Instagram. Um, so this probably won't even take a, the full hour, um, be pretty simple. So let's jump right in. Um, so I've got yesterday's open here. This is where we left off after we did all of our focus documentation stuff. Um, printing labels in light, or excuse me, in FileMaker is pretty simple. It's basically just creating another printed report um, with a very specific type to it. FileMaker does a really good job of knowing um, how many to print per sheet. Um, it's got several built-in label types already, especially with Avery labels. So if you're using Avery labels with your printer, it's it's gonna it's pretty simple. So let's dive in and show you right away. First thing I'm gonna do is open my layout manager, Command Shift L, and you can see here under printed reports, I already have all of my you know the 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 PDFs that we made before. I'm gonna add another folder under printed reports, and I'm gonna call those labels and maybe even make some subfolders. Maybe we have fixtures and put that inside of labels and maybe we have a, uh, let's see, maybe uh, dimmers and maybe, a, oops, maybe circuits as well. And the reason I'm doing those as separate folders is because you might do different label types for those different um, different things. You might have some fixture labels that are small, some that are large, depending on what kind of, of lights you're working with. So we're gonna start out building some very basic fixture labels that you can print on your printer. So I'm gonna, within the fixtures folder here, I'm gonna say new, and I'm gonna label this, uh, let's say fixture labels small. And of course, that's gonna be a printer type. Now, if we notice right away a couple of things here, actually, before we specify that printer, we wanna make sure we're looking at records from our instrument table. So just like we've laid out all of these other layouts with a associated table involved with them, we're gonna do the same thing for our label. So we're looking at records from instruments. It's a printer type. And then you can see here, so far we've only ever used this report type. Today we're gonna to be using labels for the first time. So we can ignore vertical labels and envelopes for now. Those are basically just what they say. And we're just gonna start out with labels. I'm gonna hit continue. And then right away it's gonna ask me for uh, how big these labels are. And you can see that right away here, there's a whole bunch of Avery labels that are already pretty much, you know, all the dimensions are in there preset ready to go, as well as a couple of Dymo things down here. Um, and I'm just gonna leave this as its default suggestion, the 5160, that's a, a pretty standard uh, address label, you know, that you would put on an envelope. Uh, it's, uh, well, it says right here, about an inch high to a little over two and a half inches wide. I find that's a pretty good size. It fits on a fixture yoke, um, pretty easy to pretty easy to use. So for right now, I'm not gonna do any other customizations of this. We're gonna get into custom ones in a second. I'm just gonna click next. And I'm not even gonna add any fields to this. I wanna do this all custom. So I'm not gonna add anything here. I'm just gonna say finish. You can close this layout, or the label, excuse me, the layout manager zoom in a little and now we see we have a uh, a new looking layout that we've never seen before you've got these dotted lines here and i believe that's just the yeah, because page margins are turned on we don't need that turned on but you can see here i've got a body part so some things that we're used to we've got a header we've got a body part and the only thing we can edit is the body part here on this very first label. What FileMaker will do for us is it'll automatically fig take whatever we put on this body layout and apply that going three across and however many down will fit on any given, uh, on a particular page of label. Uh, to give you an example of that, I'm just gonna draw, I'm gonna draw a rectangle on here for now. You don't, you don't need to do this, I'm just showing you an example. 
Um, and now when I go into preview mode, you see that it's automatically laid those out exactly how the labels would be set up on that particular Avery page. Now, if your printer does some weird things with margins, uh, stuff like that, you might need to come in and um, adjust some of those things under page setup. But for today's lesson, we're gonna assume that you know your printer is able to print perfectly onto these sheets. Of course, I would always suggest that before you, um, you know, before you go in and actually print an entire show's worth of labels, you do a test sheet, you know, print a couple of them, see if they fit, compare that to what you have on your screen and you, you know, and then uh, nudge and adjust things as necessary. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit further here just so we can really see what we're working with. Of course, this is a you know relatively small label, all things considered, um, but you get the idea. And I'm gonna start dropping some fields over here on to this label. Of course, I probably want a channel. Oops. I probably want a channel field there. And probably wanna make these, um, make the channel nice and bold. Maybe make it a little bit bigger, something like that. And then of course I can make this a lot smaller um, I don't really usually have channel numbers that go over, well, sometimes there's four digits, but I'm gonna say three digits for the purpose of my labels. Maybe we go a little smaller and we could fit four. You get the idea. Uh, and then make this a little bit smaller too. Something like that. One thing that's important to keep in mind as you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you keep these boxes kind of as small as possible. Because if you get up here, it looks like, yeah, this the text itself is here on the body, but you see that this box kind of goes up into the header a little bit. And if I make it a little bit bigger, you could really see that. So like, if you look at it like this, it looks fine. But if we go to print this now, you notice that that channel doesn't show up anywhere because it's splitting across those two page parts. So what I wanna do is just make sure that these boxes are as small as possible and kind of hug things in as tight as possible. Now when I go to look at that, there we go, it's printing It's printing. You know, in the body of each one of those things. Okay, so I've got channel and let's just do an option drag over here and we'll do, uh, what else do we need on a label? Probably need a dimmer number. Maybe that's not as bold, maybe not as big. A dimmer number there. Dimmer numbers are usually, for me at least, always gonna be under three digits, at least for the scale of shows that I'm doing. Maybe one day we'll get up there, we'll see. It's exciting, you guys. I actually have uh, two projects I'm working on for the fall right now, so it's a exciting week. I went from five months of nothing to to having two projects kind of thrust upon me at once. So, busy week this week. Okay, uh, dimmer circuit, and then we have, of course, address. Maybe I'll make the address a little bit bigger, depending on how you lay out your addresses. You know, if you do port offset, then you probably need more space for, you know, your slash and everything. If you do an absolute address, you might be able to get away with a smaller field, of course. Um, what else do we want on this? We probably want, Eh, I'm not going to put instrument type on there because um, hopefully that's pretty obvious if you are looking at your at the fixture with the label on it. Um, you know, purpose, put that there. Maybe we italicize that. Just kind of making this look pretty. I had two separate production meetings today. Crazy, right? All right, and then of course we probably want the position and the unit number. So what I'll probably do with these, and if you notice one thing that's happening here that um, that that uh, hasn't been that we haven't noticed, we haven't noticed in previous layouts. When I add this stuff, it doesn't automatically resize it. Like when I dropped it in, if you're working on another layout, sometimes it could add more size to your body or whatever. This one doesn't. Like if I put this over here, I don't think that will. Yeah, see, that doesn't print anywhere. So it's only gonna print what's in this in the immediate white area here, which is pretty great. Um, and maybe that probably needs to be a little smaller and let's left align that. And then maybe we have, whoops, we do our unit number, or excuse me, that other one was right aligned, we'll left align the unit number. Something like that, and of course that field could be much smaller. 
And now when I go into my preview view here, let me zoom in a little bit so we can really see it. You see, I've got a sheet of labels for all of my uh, all of my fixtures, and it kind of looks confusing like this because we don't, you know, you don't see the the label borders. Um, but you get the idea, you know, when you print this and peel them off, it's not going to look as confusing. Um, and just like anything else we have, if I really wanted to, you know, I could put a color swatch on there. I could put, I could even put my gobo image on there. Really any, any field that we have, we can put on this, um, on this layout, which is pretty cool. So, oh, I guess I probably need to put a position and unit number label here. And what, what you put on your labels is going to be totally up to you and your production electrician, whatever you think is necessary. You know, I like to put um, as much information as possible without it being confusing. You know, depending on the skill of your, of your staff, too, you don't necessarily, you know, if, if, you've, if you're, you don't necessarily need the purpose on all of these labels, for example. If, if it, all, the only person looking at it is the electrician, maybe all they really need is the channel dimmer circuit and address. They don't even necessarily need the position or the unit number on there. Um, so you can, you can use whatever information you need, obviously. And then, of course, the other thing we can do in here, you know, this position unit, we could add another little text field in here. And maybe we add a, a, a pound sign there, you know, a number sign in between. So now when we go to print it, it says position or number three electric unit number 13. Or any, again, anything you put in there will print. Okay, so that's the basics of creating these kinds of labels. Um, I'm going to show you, before we move on to the next thing, I'm going to show you in my solution kind of how... Um, kind of some of the, the examples of some of the label sheets that I have. Um, I have both, uh, where is it, label sheets. I have all kinds of label sheets here. So you can see I have, most of mine are Dymo labels, which are printed on a thermal printer. Um, the challenge, of course, with those is that if you're, especially if you're working outside or working in a high heat environment or anything where, uh, you know, the, 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 the thermal printing will degrade over time, especially outside. You know, we use the Dymo labels for our outdoor show just because they're quick and easy to print. Um, and we really only worry about them for load in. But when you go back and look at them after the show is over, <laughs> all of the text has faded away. So anything you don't want to fade, especially if you're outside, you want to print on an actual printer. But other than that, it can be on this, this thermal stuff here. So if we look at these, uh, let's do, um, I've got three different sizes of Dymo labels. I've got big ones here. So these are big fixture labels. And you can see, let me open up my status bar here. As I go through these, these are kind of nice for things like moving lights, right? Where you have more space to put it. We would, we typically would print a couple of copies of these. We'd print a, a you know, a set that would actually go on the moving light cases. We'd print a set that would go on the moving lights themselves um, versus the smaller labels that we would do on fixture yokes for a regular source four or something like that. So I've got those. Um, I also have these position hang labels, which are super handy. So this is this is super useful for you know if you're laying out a truss in in advance, or you're you know if you're making a, uh, a hang tape. Um, you know, of course, yeah, you can use the built-in hang tape tools within Vector, or excuse me, with the plugins with Vectorworks and stuff like that. Um, what I, some of the electricians I work with do is we'll actually use these labels instead. They'll just put these labels on a big, long piece of receipt paper. Um, I'm working on ways to print that receipt paper directly from FileMaker with my thermal printer. It's just, it's been kind of a challenge to get that working properly. Um, but we use these, for example, like in the park, um, we use these to prep all of our truss. So we actually, we don't pre-hang the truss. We don't hang the fixtures on the truss in advance. We, we put these labels on the truss. So all that an electrician needs to do is line up, okay, channel 12, circuit E2 drops right here. You know, again, just the information that we need on there. Um, and then I also have breakout labels. So this would go on to uh, these, this show oh, it is done. So I, I've got some uh, cable management features here within my solution. So I've got each connector is laid out with what it needs to be. So if you know, you can tell if it needs to be a uh, adapted to anything, anything like that. And again, those all print on those large label sheets. Uh, one thing to keep in mind when you do print these is uh, you want to be aware of if you're printing just one or if you're printing everything. 
So keep that in mind when you're doing it, uh, especially th with this kind of you know one-off sheet that's printing a label at a time versus an entire sheet of labels. Be aware of records being browsed or current record. Uh, so let's see, what else do we have here? Um, we've got, do, 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 I've got these smaller ones for fixtures. So these also print, you can see there's some issues here with formatting. Um, these are basically the same as the ones that we made over here, only they print on the Dymo uh, sheet, uh, the Dymo things. Same thing for circuits. We've got um, little Socopex. I don't think we've ever actually used those. And then we've got these really small ones that actually we can use to label data lines. We've got some that do you know individual circuits. So these would fit on a stage pin connector. So we can you know throw a piece of gaff down, throw this over top of it, and a little JLR, and we're all set. Um, and then some of these other ones I actually haven't looked at in a long time. I've got, it looks like these are, um, yeah, these are like index cards essentially that I made that have, you know, uh, for, uh, for positions that you can do. These would fit um, on like a, an index, or excuse me, on a, a fly rail, you know, label area there. Kind of cool. And I even went as far for a while there where you're using a lot of color rams. Um, and so this is a really cool layout that I made where you can actually go in. And if we look at this layout, you see there's these little white things that are all conditionally shown or hidden um, based on, you know, we, we went over this yesterday, but based on different calculations here. So if scroller, you know, for dip switch was normal, don't show. So these would actually be printed and put onto color rams and they'd be put exactly in the same orientation as your dip switches and everything else. So when you look at this, um, when you look at this, you could actually, uh, uh, you know, see exactly where the dip switches were supposed to be and stuff like that. And again, this is on a dime, excuse me, this is on an Avery label, so it prints that way. The reason it, it doesn't actually show anything is because I, I'm not really using any of those in my show. Um, great. And let's see, is there anything else I want to show you on here before we jump back in? Um, yeah, these I don't think we ever used, but the idea here was you could put these on individual dimmers. And some Socopex labels. So you get the idea of all of the various things that are possible uh, using this these layout um, these layouts within within FileMaker. So um, you can play around, you know, with it, whatever label sizes you have. It's really the same. So I'm not going to spend a lot of more time talking about that. The the other thing I want to show you today, and I kind of hinted at this yesterday, was how we can actually use a label report to print other kinds of paperwork that maybe aren't necessarily labels, but we can use this whole, you know, uh, do one print, you know, however many across feature that FileMaker has to do something like a focus chart, for example. So I'm going to open up my layout manager again, and I'm going to make, um, a new, a new uh, layout. I'm going to call this focus charts. I just say multi or something like that. And I'm going to choose this as as a label layout, just like we did with the other one. So printer label, and this is still going to be records from instruments. Continue. And now instead of uh, instead of doing well, there's two ways I could do this. If I want if I want to, I could go ahead and I could specify if I knew my exact dimensions and stuff like that here. I could actually just use this built-in Avery thing and then come in and edit it later. So I'm, for right now, I'm just gonna say use measurements for that same label sheet. Um, again, I'm gonna leave this blank for right now. And this looks like it's gonna be exactly the same. And of course, if we do our little test again, and we drop a square in here, and then we look at preview mode. Okay, well, it's, it's, it's doing the exact same thing of what we had before. But what I could do is I can come in here and I can start playing around with these margins a little bit to get the size that I need for that particular, um, for that, for that, uh, for, the, for how it's gonna print. So right away, I know that probably fitting three focus charts across a page is probably not gonna work. That's probably too much information to try to condense in there. So let's change this to three or two columns instead. So to do that, I'm gonna right click anywhere out here in the gray space. I'm gonna go to layout setup, and I'm gonna change my printing to be two columns. Just like that. So now I've got two columns. And again, just as a little test, if we drop our square in here, and then we look at this. Okay, now we're printing in two columns across. That makes a lot of sense. 
And then really it's as simple as dragging this body uh, column or this body space out to be as big as you think you need it to be for your layout. So if I drag it, that's just kind of an arbitrary three inches there. Now if I look at it, I've got, um, you know, I can fit six on a page. I could do some math here if my rulers are turned on. If you don't have rulers on, you can go to View Rulers or what's that Option Shift Command R. Um, and I could just do some math. Okay, if I've got an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, plus, you know, we've got a quarter inch or so for a header. Let's just say it will we'll burn a half inch. So that's 10 and a half inches. Maybe we say we do a five inch, um, five inch body. And again, this square is just as a test. Um, so we see what we're working with here. Oh, maybe that was a little too big. Something like that, perhaps. There we go. So now I'm printing four individual records on a single sheet of paper. So that works pretty well. Uh, the only downsides to doing, doing it this way is, uh, you know, if you wanted to do, you know, we've done some things with like the sub summaries with, you know, the, the header for um, positions and stuff like that. That doesn't work as well in this particular scenario because what will happen is it won't print it across the entire page. It'll just print it across the first column. So then things start to get out of alignment and I don't really like it. So this, you know, you have to make a purposeful choice to say, okay, this is what I want these focus charts to look like. Um, but let's go ahead and we'll make this really quick. I'm gonna open up a new window and I'm gonna go to my focus charts that we made yesterday. And I'm just gonna copy paste some of this stuff over onto these charts. And again, I'm not gonna spend a whole ton of time making it pretty today. Just wanna make it functional for all of you. What else do we want? We want probably all of this stuff, yeah. Type gobo. Um, what else do we need? We probably want all of this, all of these goodies. And of course, those are way bigger on this because it's a um, smaller layout, right? Oh, you know what else I'm going to show you today before we sign off? I'm going to show you how to do like some graphics for these. Uh, these things instead of the radio boxes because you don't necessarily want the radio boxes on this particular layout. Maybe you do. I don't know. Choose your own adventure. Again. Okay. So not super pretty, but you get the idea. And now when we do this, boom, we've got you know, these look pretty good. Now what you might notice right away is, okay, why is it going one, three, two, four? There's two ways we can sort, or we can have FileMaker present this data to us. One of them is going down first, the other one's going across first. And you might have noticed this when we changed our columns before, but it's a pretty, e whoops, don't wanna save that as a PDF. Um, it's a pretty easy setting to change. So I'm gonna uh, right click again and go to layout setup under printing, you will see here, uh, how do you wanna print across first or down first? So I'm gonna choose across first. And then when I go back into preview mode, now you see it's going one, two, three, four. That's being, the, the numbers are being clipped just because of the size of my text boxes, but you get the idea. Um, and what might be nice to do here is maybe we do put a little square around these. As far as I know, there's not a way to put a border just around the body uh, in this particular in this particular kind of system. If anybody does know of one, please throw it out in the chat so I, I can correct myself. So what I would do is, is just do something like this and then you could play around with getting it so it looks you know, a little bit closer to being, um, you know, being a solid line all the way through. Or I kind of like this kind of compartmentalized look like this. I think it's pretty good. And then of course you have a header at the top um, you know, you can put a footer in there just like you can with any other report. You can play around with that title header like we did before. I did have some issues yesterday when I was experimenting with this using that title header cover page kind of thing with these label sheets. 
Um, couldn't quite get it working properly, but I, I'll be honest, I didn't spend a ton of time with it, so you might be able to. Um, but yeah, get the idea. And as we go through here, you see now I've got, I'm taking up a quarter of the amount of paper. Um, works pretty well. And of course, you could also do this if you want to, you don't have to use it for focus charts. You could do other kinds of paperwork this way. Um, just, a, just a quick and easy way to lay those out. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you all today, and I had not planned on doing this, of course, so we'll see how it goes, but I want to at least kind of give you the idea. So we talked about how having these radio boxes in here, maybe maybe that's not the best um, solution for for a printed report. So one of the things we could do, one of the things we could do obviously is instead of these being radio boxes, we just change these back to um, edit boxes. So now when we look at this, it's just gonna have the, um, the text of whatever we chose from that radio box on our, on our other report, or excuse me, on our layout before. Um, so that's one option we can do. The other thing we can do, and I'm gonna open my solution back up to show you this, is we can kind of do things somewhat graphically. Um, so here on my focus assistant, ignore my photo there, um, under beam details here, you see I've added some little uh, buttons that do that. Same thing for axis. So these are actually just, if we go into the layout view of this, these are just, uh, you know, graphic objects. So there's a circle, there's a line. The, the lines themselves do a... Um, are, are a button. So this button right here performs, uh, you know, sets that field to be whatever value it needs to be. And then this little circle is conditionally hidden when, you know, instrument information, focus beam orientation does not equal this, you know, straight up and down. So what I could, what could, I really could do is I could, I could bring this, this logic into my other solution in, in a similar way. Of course, these are uh, conditionally formatted, so um, the text that's inside of these is formatted based on the value, which I have to unbutton that, I think, to show you. Oops, conditional formatting. See, so if the sharpness equals half in, then make the text color this. So you could definitely do that. Uh, let's just for right now, let's just do the axis slash orientation thing. So I'm just gonna grab these four little symbols that I made and I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna delete, actually, I'm not gonna delete it. I'm gonna put it up towards the top for now so I know um, what my, what, what I'm working with. I'm gonna make that a radio box or make it a drop down for now. No radio box. There we go. The reason I'm making it a radio box again is so I can quickly edit that data um, once I do this. Okay, now I'm going to paste these four symbols in. And of course, they are. Crap, they're white, so that's not going to work well. All right, let, let's backtrack a little bit. I'm going to go back to my focus assistant so that we could potentially just have a, a darker background. Um, and we'll look at it there, and then you could, of course, apply the exact same logic over to your um, to your layouts. So I'm just going to give myself a little box here, and I'm going to make that box black. And now I will paste these symbols in here. Look at that. There we go. Again, I could make these buttons if I want to, but what I'm going to do instead is just make this a graphic symbol. And so what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to take this one here and I'm going to say I want to hide this up and down arrow. I'm going to hide it when uh, focus axis does not equal. And what did we choose for that? Up, down. I guess this should be US. It should be UD instead of up or instead of up, uh, up stage. I'm just going to say US for now. Of course, we'll wrap that in quotes. And we'll do the same thing for this one. We'll say, don't show me this object when axis does not equal left, right. And then don't show me this one when it does not equal. And finally, Oops, 
last quote. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is the challenge of um, of using these backslashes like this. The backslash is used as an escape character within FileMaker. So I actually have to use an extra one to escape uh, to escape the the the, the uh, to escape the uh, but it's thinking that I'm trying to escape each one. So I actually might have to do double the amount of these. Um, but we'll, we'll experiment in a second and, try and find out. All right, so I go back into browse mode here. And I now I can choose left, right, upstage, downstage, this way, that way. OK, so I'd have to play with those a little bit to get the right, um, the right syntax for what it's looking for. But you get the idea there. Um, what I could do is I could then pile all four of these symbols grab all four of these symbols and I can just pop them all right on top of each other. So let's do that. We'll do center align, middle align. And can I? No, I can't change that. And now when I go in and do this, it's only going to show me the one that I have there. So you could use the same thing, of course, if these arrows were black instead of um, instead of white, you could put that on your report. You could also do the same thing with your barrel, with your edge, with your zoom, with any of that kind of stuff. You could easily go through and just make some graphic objects that change based on what is selected. You know, again, if I were to come in here and just take all of this, let's deselect you. And if I were to put that over here on my, uh, where did it go? Oops, I accidentally made that in the wrong folder. That's fine. If I were to put this in here under axis, I have to find the one I actually set, but you get the idea. It would actually show up there uh, for that particular fixture, which is pretty cool. Great. So believe it or not, that's pretty much it for today. Um, yeah, the reason the, Lee, the reason that the diagonal focus is four care. Oh, you saying the, let me look real quick here. Focus the system. Ah, there you go. That's actually absolutely right. So these are actually four characters and not three. So that means that this one has to be, I believe five and this one can, I, uh, to be honest with you, I need to look up about uh, using the backslash like that because, again, since it is an escape character, it will... Um, hey, there we go. So, yeah, this one right here, I need to do a little research, but uh, I'm sure I might just need to put double the amount so I need to escape every single backslash, but that could be wrong. I do need to look that up and see. So once I look that up, I will... Um, I will post in the comments of this video exactly what, how to do that. Well, let's just experiment real quick. Um, which one was that? Not that one. It's this one. So let's see here. If it's four slashes, then I might need eight. I think I did the wrong one. I did. Oops. And you are eight. Okay. All right. So yeah, these three work. Uh, I just I need to look up and see how to, um, to to how to escape every single one of those characters. But that's if you want to look it up yourself, that's the best way to do it. I mean, that's what you're looking for is how to how to use that character and escape it that many times. Uh, it's just blanking from my mind right now. All right, anyway, so uh, that's pretty much it for today. Um, I know that, again, this was a, a much simpler lesson than previous ones. Um, if you do have any other questions, please feel free to throw them in the chat. Otherwise, I will see you on Thursday. Thursday, we're going to be covering a basic connection to EOS. So you, if you notice right away in my solution here, I've got a little button that turns the light on, turns the light off. 
Um, so we'll look at how to do that both on your work notes uh, screen. So, you know, when you're in here working with your work notes and you're saying, oh, what's wrong with this light? You could just click a button and turn it on. And then we'll also do it on the instrument records themselves. Um, so that'll be Thursday. Um, before Thursday, you're going to want to download the Monkey Bread software FileMaker plugins. That's what we're going to be using to create that connection between FileMaker and EOS. Um, we, I will go over how to install those at the top of the video, so you don't need to install them yet. But the download time I found can take a little while. I don't think their server is the greatest. So um, make sure you just have those at least downloaded before we get started. There is a link to those on my website um, under the under you know mikewoodld.com slash filemaker slash or, or not slash, but whatever the 2.6 is, whatever page that is. All right, great. So again, I'm going to hang out for a couple more minutes. Any questions, throw them in the chat. While I'm waiting for questions, I'm going to uh, <laughs> look up here. Yeah, it says I need to do double. I thought that's what I did. Hmm. Should I just make yet another typo? Is that the problem? Focus, focus axis. Let me just count them. One, two, three. Oh, I went the wrong. Okay. <clears throat> well, there's the answer. I just had. I was. I used the wrong slashes there. So let's go here. Hey, look at that, everybody. If I just had a little more attention to detail, then the things I say would actually make sense. I knew I knew what I was doing every once in a while, all right? Great. This is a good example of, you know, with FileMaker, you can Google just about anything, and you're going to find 20 different ways to do it, which works out super well. We also just, with that with that backslash thing we touched on, um, the idea of why it can be challenging to put quote marks in your frame sizes. Um, so because a quote mark is typically used to, de de to determine a string or a search, you know, some kind of search within FileMaker, uh, you would have to escape all of your quotes within your calculations and scripts and stuff. And you can obviously do that. I just think it's a little bit easier just to not use quotes in your frame size um, fields. Okay, great. It looks like there's no uh, additional questions coming in. So I'm going to sign off of the live stream for now. I will hang out in the chat for a few minutes. Um, and I will see you all on Thursday. Thanks so much, everybody. If you are still watching, I just realized I forgot to say, I tomorrow-ish, I'm going to be putting up a form on my website, on the FileMaker part of my website, uh, asking for your suggestions of what you want to see next. Um, I have, obviously, the EOS stuff is a big one. We're going to, eventually, I want to do more with um, other parts of your show, so cable management, dimmer management, circuit management, things like that, as well as... Um, as well as doing uh, more photo features. So being able to use webcams and stuff like that to do your focus photos. So any other things you can think of, please feel free. I'll, I'll post on Instagram once I have that form up on my website. Thanks a lot.